I'm Effie Parks. Welcome to Once Upon a Jane, the podcast. This is a place I created for us to connect and share the stories of our not so typical lives. Raising kids who are born with rare genetic syndromes and other types of disabilities can feel pretty isolating. What I know for sure is that when we can hear the triumphs and challenges from others who get it, we can find a lot more laughter, a lot more hope, and feel a lot less alone. I believe there are some magical healing powers that can happen for all of us through sharing our stories, and I'll take all the help I can get. Once Upon a Gene is proud to be part of Bloodstream Media. Living in a family affected by rare and chronic illness can be isolating, and sometimes the best medicine is connecting to the voices of people who share your experience. This is why Bloodstream Media produces podcast, blogs, and other forms of content for patients, families, and clinicians impacted by rare and chronic diseases. Visit bloodstreammedia.com to learn more. Hello there, and welcome to the show. This is Once Upon a Gene, and I'm your host, Effie Parks, and I'm so, so, so glad that you're here with me today. You know, if you're ever just wondering, like, gosh, Once Upon a Gene has helped me so much, I wish there was something that I could do. You can. You can share this show. You can share this episode. You just tell someone, email it to them, post it on your social media, have someone pull their phone out in front of you and show them how to subscribe to the podcast. That's going to even get you extra points in heaven. So please share this show with your people. And especially this show, when you see a family in the very beginning or who is struggling with the idea of having a genetic test, please share this episode with them because that's what I'm going to talk about today. You know, there's a lot of things that we see online, you know, common quips, age old sayings, just stuff that rolls out of people's mouths because it's just the way that it is. And they don't necessarily think about what they say before they say it. It's totally normal. We all do that. But today I want to talk about one of those sayings. Getting a diagnosis or having a label won't change a thing. It won't change how much I love my child and it won't change anything that we're doing. You've heard that one, right? You've probably even been told that. You might have even said it to yourself or to someone that you love. I can tell you how inaccurate that statement is and how important a genetic diagnosis actually is. Of course, you're going to have immense love for your child and you might not change much about your day-to-day routine, but it is not just that. It won't change anything. It's about what it will change and what doors will open and what possibilities will unfold because having a genetic diagnosis brings so much more into your life that many don't even realize. When I was in the beginning, I remember sitting there getting that life-changing, terrible, tragic news, and it was overwhelming. There was a flood of emotions, fear, and to this day, continued uncertainty in many ways. That moment was just so intense and such a blur. I felt completely lost and isolated, grappling with the unknown. But one of the choices I made, especially when I realized how disconnected I had become, was that I had to find my people, and I had to make a change, and I had to do something. Connecting with others became one of the most transformational things that ever happened to me. Community is so vital. When you receive a genetic diagnosis, You're not just given a label. You are welcomed into a new family of people from all over the world who understand exactly what you're going through. These connections are lifelines. They offer support, advice, and the comfort of knowing that you're not alone. It's like finding the brightest light in the darkest night. With a genetic diagnosis, you also have the chance to contribute to research, to fund research, This is where the power of our collective stories comes into play also. By participating in studies or clinical trials, sending off your blood, or filling out all those registry questionnaires, we're helping to push forward the science that could one day lead to treatments or even cures. It's an empowering feeling to know that our experiences and our journeys are part of something much bigger. One of the most crucial aspects of receiving a genetic diagnosis is the relief that it can bring. I constantly see parents online or I've met them in person who carry the absolute heaviest burdens of guilt, thinking that they did something wrong, that it was their fault because they were a carrier or whatever it might be. But here's the truth. It's not your fault. 
You didn't do anything wrong, and you couldn't have known otherwise. This realization can lift a tremendous weight off your shoulders, freeing you from guilt and self-blame. A genetic diagnosis also brings precision care. It can change the medications you use, help you compare symptoms among other kids, and talk about side effects of certain drugs. I'm going to tell you a big one. For example, in our CTNNB1 community, maybe two, many of our children have been diagnosed with a rare eye disorder called fever, F-E-V-R, familial exudative vitreoretinopathy. I'm sure I did not pronounce that correctly. This condition, which has event, it will eventually cause total vision loss, is only detectable through a specific test called fluorescein angiography. Without knowing Ford's genetic disorder and the other kids with CTNNB1 who have fever, we might not have ever discovered it in time. And thanks to the information from being connected and having a genetic diagnosis, we were able to hopefully prevent him from being blind one day. He went in many times and I asked them to check this and they told me he does not have it because it's inherited. It's not from a genetic diagnosis. We had to advocate heavily as a community, and we got an amazing doctor from CHOP, Dr. Skulls, on our side, who made a total presentation that families like mine can bring into the office and say, I want you to check again, and this is the only way you can check. Because I did also have doctors who, quote unquote, checked by looking in Ford's eyes, when again, I found out later that can only be done by <laughs> this dye that you inject, and he has to be under anesthesia for it for you to see, to then know that yes, their retina is maybe detaching and that it needs to be lasered. And you have to have annual checkups to see if it is progressing and to continue to laser it. It is a big deal. Nobody would have looked, nobody would have known, and he might have lost his vision if we didn't find out. Another thing that our kids have, not all of them, is a tethered cord. None of our kids just get an MRI across their whole body. They usually just give kids like ours an MRI on their brain. Nobody knows to ask unless they have a genetic diagnosis and they're connected with other families who have the same disorder or who have learnings from it or who know what questions to ask and what to look for and how to advocate for it. These are big, huge deals, sometimes even bigger depending on your disease. Knowing a genetic diagnosis matters so much in the clinic and advocating for the health and the precision care of your child. A genetic diagnosis also inspires action. It fuels a fire within you to do more and to love deeper and to advocate louder. I have personally experienced this through the podcast a million times and beyond outside of it. I have met parents who were inspired from this show to start foundations, to build communities, to launch other podcasts, to write books, to create accessible playgrounds. One mom, you know who she is, Tracy, she even went back to school to become a neuroscientist so she could figure out why her daughter was having thousands of seizures a day. The possibilities are endless, and it is an entirely new life that you can walk into with your eyes wide open when you have an answer. When Ford was diagnosed, it was like the world opened up. Suddenly, you know, after, after the really dark uh, blur of doom that I had to go through, Suddenly I had a direction and I have a purpose and I still feel that way every single day with so much new energy. And while this is still very hard and I know it will continue to be very hard and the love never changes, I believe the love evolves. We as parents gain a luxurious amount of reverence for our kids. We don't sweat the small things as much. We pick our battles and we choose our boundaries among so many other things. It changes so much about the family dynamic, and it gives us clarity. What a genetic diagnosis brings is priceless. Every new family that joins our community starts where we once did. They feel the same fear and the same uncertainty. And it's our responsibility to remember where we came from and to make this place better for them. We need to reach out, share our stories, and offer our support. We need to be the light that guides them through the darkness just as someone did for us once before. So to all the parents out there, if you're on the brink of receiving a genetic diagnosis, or if you're just in the thick of it, know this. It's a powerful, transformative step. 
Embrace it when you're ready. Lean into the community. Contribute to the research. And let that guilt shed off you. Use the knowledge to provide the best care possible and to let it inspire you to take bold actions, even if it's just loving more and loving deeper at home. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any thoughts or experiences that you'd like to share, please send me a message. And if you have anything to add to this list, because I always forget everything when I'm making a bullet point of why a diagnosis matters, please send it over to me and we will add it to the master list. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Take care. I hope you've been enjoying this podcast. If you like what you hear, please share this show with your people, and please make sure to rate and review it on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also head over to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to connect with me and stay updated on the show. If you're interested in sharing your story, or if you have anything you would like to contribute, please submit it to my website at effieparks.com. Thank you so much for listening to the show and for supporting me along the way. I appreciate y'all so much. I don't know what kind of day you're having, but if you need a little pick-me-up, Ford's got you.